From the MidwestSports.net studios, this is Midwest Sports Saturday. Good morning. I'm Joey McWilliams. Glad to be with you on this Saturday morning. Listen, it is the first Saturday in November. It is an abbreviated show today. We will make up for it next week in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Let's go straight to Division II. Football regional rankings have come out. Super Region Three rankings look like this, including some of the teams from this MidwestSports.net regional footprint. Ferris State, the number one team in Super Region 3, followed very closely by Washita. The Tigers are 9-0 and and have a big matchup today as they are taking on Southern Arkansas. Uh, another big matchup today involves Northwest Missouri. Grand Valley State, number 3 in the Super Region 3 rankings. Northwest Missouri, number 4. And the Bearcats are taking on Fort Hay State today as well. Two more teams, by the way, that are in these regional rankings. We continue to move on down from the GLVC. Indianapolis in at number 5. Number 6 is Southern Arkansas. The Mule Riders at 8-1 and one, and trying to uh, see if they can wrest that GAC title away from Washita. Big matchup today. Number seven is Fort Hayes State. Defeated Northwest Missouri State last year, trying to repeat that feat today uh, against the Bearcats. Number seven, Fort Hayes State. Number eight is Pittsburgh State. Those are the top eight. That would be the playoff picture if the season ended today. Of course, it hasn't ended yet. A couple more weeks to find out what happens there. Number nine is Harding. Bison's on the outside looking in right now as are the Miners at number 10, Missouri S&T, in at number 10, the Super Region 3 ranking. So we'll see how this shakes out. Lots to take place today. We'll talk about this, of course, a little bit more in depth next week as we know a little bit more about the picture of the penultimate weekend of the regular season in 2018. Also from Super Region 4, Shadron State on the outside looking in right now, but in the rankings as the Eagles are number 10 in Super Region 4. Well, we look at a couple of games from the NAIA today as Graceland taking on William Penn. Midland is at Briar Cliff. Northwestern at Concordia. The Red Raiders uh, continuing to right the ship there. It is going to be Texas College at Oklahoma Pandle today, Panhandle today. Missouri Valley at Baker today. Southwestern at St. Mary today. One of the biggest matchups in the NAI today is uh, it has KCAC title implications as that will be Avila at Kansas Wesleyan. Coyotes have just uh, had a fantastic season, still undefeated, trying to continue that role, taking on the upstart Eagles, who have had a great year as well. Again, KCAC title hopes on the line right there. And then Dort at Morningside, the number one team in the country. The Mustangs continuing to roll and, and push toward a playoff appearance. We had an opportunity to get to hear from the quarterback of the Morningside Mustangs, Trent Solzma, who has had a fantastic year, no doubt about it, the top quarterback in the NAI. And Tyler Paulson sat down with him a little bit earlier this weekend to talk about senior day coming up and, of course, his year as a whole. Hi, I'm Tyler Paulson with MidwestSports.net. Joining me today is Morningside quarterback Trent Solzma. Thank you, Trent. Yep. So with Senior Day being this Saturday, can you kind of reflect on what your career has meant to you here at Morningside? Uh, it's been an amazing uh, five years for me, I guess. I've got to meet um, a lot of great people, had a lot of great memories on and off the field, and I'm just really thankful for all the amazing times that I've had so far. Absolutely. Uh, so kind of going off that, you and Connor, I know you each broke your own respective records this season. Uh, what's it been like to play with a guy like that for your entire high school and college career? Uh, it's amazing. He makes me look a lot better than I am. He makes the offense kind of click and go fast. and. He just makes a ton of plays, and he's a great guy off the field, one of my best friends, so I'm just really thankful for all the time we've had together. Absolutely. Uh, last one that I got for you, Trent, with just a few regular season games left, um, is there anything that you you and the team are going to do differently to kind of prepare for a long playoff run, or are you just going to keep it the same like, that you've been doing? Uh, we're just going to try and keep things the same, stay uh, focused each week. Um, our team motto is kind of finished to focus, so we're trying to just take it one game at a time right now and stay locked in on door this week, and then, you know, as we... We go into the playoffs, we're just going to, like I said, just try and stay focused on who our opponent is and try and get the job done. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Trent, thank you so much. Yep, thank you. For Midwest Sports, I am Tyler Paulson. Thanks to Tyler Paulson and the Sports Information Department at Morningside. And, of course, thanks to Trent Solsma for stopping by as well. Of course, Morningside hosting Dort today. We talked about regional rankings in football. How about the regional rankings in volleyball? In the central region, well, the rankings have come out again this week, back on Monday. Concordia St. Paul, still the number one team in the central region. No surprise there. Washburn still at number two. Now, Washburn had a, a loss last night, and actually 
Uh, it's going to set up something interesting here with the number three team, Nebraska Kearney. Now, Kearney has just two losses on the season, both of them coming at the hands of Washburn. But Kearney swept Missouri Western. Washburn, however, was swept by UCO, Central Oklahoma, number eight in the regional rankings. And that means that with that loss, Kearney has at least clinched a share of the title and with a win today at home against Northwest Missouri, would win the outright MIAA title. It's an interesting turn as Washburn has just uh, had the lead pretty much throughout the, the whole season. Carney hanging on, and that's not going to be an easy match. Now, it will be at home today, but it's not going to be an easy match for Carney uh, taking on Northwest Missouri. Concordia St. Paul, number one. Washburn, number two. Carney in at number three. Number four, the Central Missouri Jennies. Number five is Minnesota Duluth. Number six, Northern State. Number seven, Southwest Minnesota State. Three teams from the Northern Sun. It is interesting to have three teams from the MIAA on top of those teams. And number eight is UCO. Again, the Broncos sweeping Washburn a little bit earlier this week. Number nine, Sioux Falls. Number 10, Northwest Missouri. Those two teams on the outside looking in, hoping things shake out to their benefit as the regular season is winding down. We'll know the, well, we'll know a little bit more about it. Conference tournament play takes place next week. And again, uh, we will actually be on site for one of the conference tournaments in the central region in Division Two. In the Division Two Midwest region, Drury, the Panthers, up to number one. And number nine in the Midwest region is Rockhurst. The Hawks have dropped out of the top eight and need to make a run very likely in the GLVC tournament uh, to secure a spot in the NCAA Division II playoffs. In Division Three, in the Central Region, regional rankings look like this. Washington in the number two spot and number seven spot held by Wartburg as the Knights are in the top eight. We move over to Division Three football now for a moment. And Hendricks is at Rhodes today. The schedule looking like this. Loris at Coro. It's going to be Luther at Wartburg. And Buena Vista at Nebraska. This is one of those, the loser of this one, probably in the American Rivers Conference cellar. Uh, Buena Vista at Nebraska Wesleyan today. Also a cellar dweller game going on today. Cornell at Grinnell. The loser of this one likely in the cellar for the season in the Midwest Conference in the South Division. Washington at Milliken today. Northwest Minnesota at Westminster. And it is Dubuque at Simpson. Now, I've talked about the cellar dweller games. How about one with conference implications on the line there. The winner clinches at least a share of the American River Conference today. Dubuque and Simpson both 6-2 and two on the year and 5-1 and one in conference play. Dubuque will face Wartburg next week. Wartburg also 6-2 and two and 5-1 and one in the season finale. And so we'll see how that shakes out for the American Rivers Conference. Talking about Division Three football, well, Washington on the road today as uh, – the Bears continue to get stellar play from a host of players, but not, not the least of those quarterback punter Johnny Davidson, who was named the Division Three quarterback of the week on a national level, and Davidson talked about his play. I mean, obviously, I think, you know, it's a great honor to win, uh, but I think it, you know, tests more to the entire offense instead of just me. Uh, you know, it starts up front with the guys, uh, you know, the offensive line blocking for me, keeping me protected, also the running backs fitting in, you know, picking up blitzing linebackers. And then, you know, I believe it's just me distributing the ball to the receivers, um, allowing the receivers to make plays out there, you know, getting yards after uh, the catch and everything like that. So. Obviously, uh, Augustana, a very tough opponent. Um, and, you know, we've been, you know, down at half a couple times this season, uh, you know, of course, the season we kind of started off slow at the beginning, but uh, going into halftime, you know, we we said, hey, let you know the first half be behind us, and, you know, come out the second half, score zero zero, and start off strong. So we kind of told everybody keep the positive attitude, and we came out and we played the second half football. You know, we've been playing all season. Uh, I don't really think about it too much during the game. Like I didn't know my stats at all throughout the game, but I knew, you know, from an offensive standpoint, we were kind of clicking, we were putting points up on the board, guys were making plays. So I don't try to think about it too much during the game. Um, you know, at the end of the game, obviously, I might realize it, the offense might realize it, but you know, during the game, I'm you know just worried about putting points up. On on the board, you know, staying ahead, you know, helping keep the defense off the field um, and everything like that. Just keep the, you know, the groove of the game in our way and being positive about it. Both of them had huge games. Uh, Nick made some ama amazing catches. You know, uh, I was kind of just putting the ball up there. He made some diving catches, you know, came down with them. And Mitch again, 
was getting those yards after uh, the catch. So he was, you know, uh, really producing the yards that he came up with and, you know, allowed me to get the yardage I did. But both of them had great catches along with all the receivers as well. Um, you know, distributing the ball like we did, I think multiple, you know, receivers had over five catches. Um, it, it makes it tough for the defense to key on one, you know, player specifically. It's going to be a very tough game. Milken's obviously a very quick opponent. Um, you know, they've shown their team speed throughout the entire year. Um, and obviously they're very good. Uh, they played you know, close games with a lot of opponents. Um, so, you know, we're going into this game like we have every other game, you know, putting a great week of practice together and then coming, you know, coming out on Saturday, hopefully to execute. Special thanks again to Chris Mitchell and the Sports Information Department there at Washington for that video as well. Davidson always giving credit to his team and the, the, the all the players around him for allowing him to be in a position to shine and excel. To the Division One schedule, it looks like this. Some of these games nationally televised today. This one, not. Alabama A&M at Arkansas Pine Bluff. Lamar at Central Arkansas. It's South Alabama at Arkansas State today. Illinois State at Northern Iowa. Iowa at Purdue. Iowa State's going to be at Kansas. San Diego at Drake today. Kansas State at TCU. Tennessee State at Southeast Missouri State today. Missouri State at South Dakota State. Missouri and Florida and that one's going to be in Florida today. Nebraska at Ohio State, trying to pull off a big one there. Connecticut at Tulsa. Oklahoma State at Baylor today. And Oklahoma trying to stay in the college football playoff picture today on the road today at Texas Tech. We look at some scores from soccer conference tournaments around the Midwest Sports.net regional footprint to the GLVC semifinals in women's soccer Yesterday, it was Rockhurst uh, defeating Southern Indiana. Number seven seed, Rockhurst, making its way into the finals. 1-1 tie, 4-3 in penalty kicks. The Hawks get the victory. Bellerman, the number five seed, upsetting Truman, 3-0. And so it will be Rockhurst and Bellerman in the GLBC women's soccer final. The men's soccer final will also see Bellerman as uh, the number two seed, defeated McKendry, 1-0 yesterday. Maryville. Takes down Rockhurst, one nothing also. So it's Bellerman and Maryville in GLVC Men's Soccer Championship Final. To the GAC, the women's soccer semis looked like this. Southwestern Oklahoma defeated Southern Nazarene, the two-seed over the three-seed, 2-0. And Oklahoma Baptist, the host, taking on Washita, a scoreless tie through two overtimes. It goes to penalty kicks, and Oklahoma Baptist comes away with a 4-2 victory there. So it will be Southwestern at <coughs> Oklahoma Baptist. That game tonight at 7 o'clock, and I get to be on the call for that one on the GAC Sports Network. GAC men's soccer, and on Friday it was Harding 6-1 over Oklahoma Baptist. The top seed takes down the four seed in strong fashion there. Washita against Southern Nazarene. The Tigers defeat the Crimson Storm 3-1, the three seed over the two seed, so it will be Harding and Washita in the GAC men's soccer final. KCAC women's soccer quarterfinal action. Looked like this. Top seed Kansas Wesleyan over Avila 1-0. The eight seed uh, falling there to the Coyotes. Two seed Ottawa over York 1-0. Three seed Oklahoma Wesleyan over Tabor 3-0. And the four seed upset Bethany over Friends in overtime 1-0. And the semis look like this in the KCAC. It'll be Bethany against Kansas Wesleyan. Oklahoma Wesleyan taking on Ottawa in the women's soccer semifinals. Also in women's soccer in the MIAA, UCO, 3 nothing victory over Fort Hayes State. And the defending NCAA Division II champions, Central Missouri, UCM, 7-1, a statement game over Emporia State. So it's UCO versus UCM, Central Oklahoma versus Central Missouri in the MIAA women's soccer final. And we move over to Division II football now and look at a few selected games on the docket today. It's going to be Wayne State at Upper Iowa, Northern Sun Conference game taking place there. Missouri Southern at Emporia State. Washburn at Pitt State, that one could be intriguing today. Central Missouri at Lindenwood as well. Uh, Central Washington going halfway across the country to take on Southwest Baptist in Bolivar. Missouri S&T trying to pick up a big victory today on the road at McKendree. Now, games with title implications today, and there are three of those. In the GLVC, it's Indianapolis at Truman State. The title is on the line today. Truman State having won six consecutive games. Well, both these teams scored at least 40 points last week. Truman State with a 41-7 victory over Quincy. 
The quarterback for the Bulldogs, Jaden Barr, 859 rushing yards this year for 100-plus yard games, and no quarterback for Truman has ever rushed for at least 1,000 yards. So Barr has the chance to do that, or 1,000 yards in a season, excuse me. Barr has the chance to do that uh, possibly even today. See how that works out. Sam Reeves, by the way, for the Bulldogs, and the defense for Truman State just taking care of business. Sam Reeves, 30 and a half sacks for his career, eight and a half sacks this season. And you you might wonder why. Well, he's definitely a two sport star as he's the number four ranked wrestler in Division Two in the 197 pound class. So you have to think that he knows how to not only make the tackle wrap up and, and definitely put the opponent on the turf. To the GAC, title implications? Yes, no doubt. Eight and one Southern Arkansas at nine and zero Washita GAC title on the line. 75th all time meeting between these two schools. And the last two have really, really gone to the wire. Barn burners, no doubt. Last season, it was a 45-42 victory for Washita in the Murphy USA Classic. Two years ago, this game was played in Arkadelphia, where it is today. 40-37, the Tigers come out on top in four overtimes. Barrett Renner, Southern Arkansas's quarterback extraordinaire, four yards shy of 300 yards passing last week. Doesn't matter. He became just the second quarterback in Arkansas State history. And this is collegiate level, all levels, Division I through NAI, to eclipse 12,000 yards passing in a career. He now has 12,215. Looks to see if he can expand on that number today. Karan Higgins, by the way, 179 receptions. He's tied for the school record there. So his next reception from the arm of Barrett Renner will put him in the lead in that category. But that's not going to be an easy thing because they're going up against the top defense in all of Division II, Washita, 9.6 points per game. That's all that the Tigers are giving up, and that's good enough for Tops in Division II. So that is the GAC. MIAA title on the line today, and it's going to be in Maryville as Northwest Missouri hosting Fort Hay State. The MIAA title on the line. Fort Hay State winning 13 12 last year. Tigers, a little bit different look. Missouri continues to lead well for Fort Hayes State. Northwest Missouri, though, on a five-game winning streak since falling to Central Oklahoma. The average margin of victory for the Bearcats in that five-game winning streak, 29 points. So a tall order for Fort Hayes State today on the road at Northwest Missouri. Also, <coughs> games that uh, are taking place today throughout the MidwestSports.net Regional Footprint Division Two games. Quincy at William Jewell. Shadron, the number 10 team in the Midwest Region Regional Rankings on the road at South Dakota Mines today. Northwest Oklahoma at Oklahoma Baptist. And Central Oklahoma at Northeastern State. Now this one's for the President's Cup. The last 20 meetings of this since it's been called for the, uh, the President's Cup rivalry there. 11 and nine Central Oklahoma. Northeastern State, though, will do it without the head coach that has led throughout the course of the year. Rob Robinson, it was announced by Northeastern State, will not have his contract renewed. He has since stepped down. Rob Messenger, the quarterback, or excuse me, the wide receivers coach and assistant head coach, is now the acting coach for the remainder of the season. That is a look at Division II football. I want to say thanks for all of you for watching today. Again, an abbreviated show today. That's all right. We will more than make up for it next week in Hot Springs, Arkansas, on the site of the Great American Conference Volleyball Tournament. And we will talk rivalry football. We will have volleyball. We'll have basketball. Uh, lots on the docket and some big interviews as well. I think you're going to enjoy this. We have a, a few big names coming in uh, that we'll be able to talk with and, and uh, show you next week. So, I'm Joey McWilliams. want to say thanks again to Chris Mitchell and the Sports Information Department from Washington. I uh, want to say thanks to the Sports Information Department at Morningside, to Mark Adkins and Aaron Edlund, and, of course, Tyler Paulson, who is just a fantastic reporter, taking care of business today and bringing us Trent Solzma as Morningside hosting at Dort today, senior day there for Morningside. I want to say thanks also to my family for allowing me to get to be with you each and every Saturday morning. For Midwest Sports Saturday, I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks again for watching. God bless you all, and have a great day.